Welcome back. More people die from this than highway accidents, breast cancer, and AIDS combined. We are talking about medical errors. And that is one reason patient safety is such a high priority. So today we have 17th Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Richard Carmona here, to talk with us about the subject that can affect us all. First of all, doctor, it's so good to have you here again. Happy to be back with you guys. Thank you. Good to have you. So today's day and age, I mean, with all of our technology, one would think that medical errors just don't happen anymore, but it's actually a bigger deal than we would think. It is a big deal. There are several hundred thousand of these errors and they result in deaths, they result in disability. And what they have in common is they're all preventable if we put in place the proper infrastructure, the checklist that we use now to prevent the wrong things from being done, the wrong medication from being given, the wrong operation from being done. All of those have a significant morbidity and mortality. And I, I, we were talking about, you know, the combination of, of deaths that this outweighs. It's the third largest yes. uh, cause of death. And I think a lot of people, that will be a little shocking to them, uh, that statistic. Yeah, I think it will be. Uh, but, you know, it, it's hidden. It's yeah. hidden there in a very busy health world of hospitals and clinics and doctors and nurses all trying to do their best. But the fact is, is that we're moving pretty quickly now. Science is getting much more complex. People take more medications. There's more machines taking care of people. And there's, because of that, there's lots of opportunities for people to make mistakes. And, you know, we're taking the humans out of a lot of these things now because of the remote monitoring and things. So we have to be very cautious to be able to always protect the patient. And actually, this evening, you are going to be flying out to a summit, which actually uh, former President Bill Clinton, Vice President Biden will be attending. Tell us a little bit about the summit. It's the Patient Safety Summit, and uh, it's a wonderful organization. Uh, a guy named Joe Chiani, who, uh, who's a businessman in, in the medical prof uh, field, uh, he put this together a number of years ago because he saw an opportunity to do something uh, and, and return to the community, socially responsible, because he saw what you've pointed out, all of these deaths, we must do something about that. And being that he has a company that makes a lot of monitoring equipment, electronics, he said, I want to be involved. He started this organization and it's really taken off and it's become the um, aggregator for thought leaders around how can we prevent these bad things from happening. So the meeting tomorrow and over the weekend will be about bringing those thought leaders together to discuss how can we improve patient safety by reducing morbidity and mortality and all of these areas that contribute to the problem. One of the main topics I think you'll be talking about is sepsis. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Sepsis is an infection. Okay, it's, it may start out as a little infection, but it gets into your blood. It spreads around your body, and it can cause shock, so it can drop your blood pressure, and it can kill you. It can affect all the organs in your body. So sepsis, and what you read about most recently, was Ebola. Okay. Yeah. And so we're going to be using Ebola as a teaching point during this meeting for people who are not doctors and scientists but are there that are interested to show them all of the steps that it takes to protect people from something like an emerging infection like Ebola. So Ebola becomes a teaching point because it's so recent in our mind, people respond to it. And I know one of the things that uh, you will kind of be tackling is about uh, patient assertiveness. Yes. Uh, which I think falls into a lot of people think uh, doctors are, they should be more knowledgeable or, you know, we should, yeah. should be polite or why do we even need to be talking about assertiveness as a patient? Well, it's really important because often people are intimidated by a person in a white jacket, yeah. you know, and a doc, a nurse, and they follow instructions. And they go, okay, and then they go home and go, gee, I really didn't understand. Did they say to take this medicine or go to this clinic or when the appointment should be? And so by assertiveness, we mean it in a real professional way, okay? So, you know, if I'm your doctor and I tell you, you know, we need to do this operation for these reasons, I would expect you to say, well, explain the operation to me. And, and how are you going to do that? Who's going to put me to sleep? Who's going to wake me up? What room am I going to be in? What kind of medications will I take? So if you're an informed consumer, it's less likely these mistakes will occur because you and your family know what to expect as you go through the process. Isn't it funny? We would ask a lot of questions when we maybe purchase a television exactly. or something like that. We'd want to know about the warranty. We'd yes. want to know, you know, the grade of this television. But when it comes to our health, we find it some way where we don't find a way where we can ask questions, which is yeah. very interesting. Well, I, I think part of it is what I call this intimidation factor. It's just, you know, you, 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 people uh, are a little reticent to ask the doctor because that's the smart person and, you know, I'm, I'm, and this stuff is complicated, so maybe I don't really understand. One of the things we talk about is improving the health literacy of patients, being that my job is to convey to you all this complex stuff in a simple way that the average person can understand it and then act on that information to protect themselves. Well, I think it's, I mean, that's a great point. It's all about humanizing the whole experience yes. rather than it being so cold and just operating room, you know, with the lights. I, 
I totally agree with you. Yeah. And, and it's tougher now. It's tougher because, you know, we're in this fast-moving society, a lot, a lot more um, interaction, everything from social media to complex instruments that are monitoring you, and we forget that the practice of medicine is really about humanity. It's, a, it's about having a heart. It's about being compassionate. It's about being passionate. And, and your point is well taken. We can't lose that because the, the patient-doctor relationship has a therapeutic value. We can't measure it. But it does help you get better when you have that trust in your professional and the professional trusts you. And so your, your goal, you have a big goal, yes. zero preventable deaths by 2020. How achievable is that? It is achievable if we can get all of the thought leaders together and they go back to their hospitals and their clinics, they educate the patients. And every year we get better at this by getting this message out and the media helping us. Guys like you who say this is important, let's get it out to the people. So the idea is to eliminate all of these preventable challenges, uh, whether they be infection, sepsis, whether they be operations that are done maybe on the wrong side of a body, whether it's a medication error. But each and every one of them can cause death or disability and adds to tremendous cost of over a trillion dollars a year to our health care system. Well, I think that's a, a very um, noble you know, date and cause that you guys are going for. 2020 is when you guys are hoping to uh, get this eradicated, which is amazing. Doctor, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we hope that uh, great things come from the summit this weekend. Well, thank you both for the opportunity. Thank you, doctor. Absolutely. And to learn more about the summit and joining the patient safety movement, you can go online to patientsafetymovement.org.